I have regrets. If I could go back in time to the early stages of my drumming, there are a lot of things that I would change. There are a ton of things that I either did do or didn't do that really slowed down the progression of my drumming overall. So now I am going to show you how to avoid my mistakes so that you can progress faster than I did as a beginner drummer. So let's get into it. The first regret I have is having a big head and an even bigger ego. When I was a young teenager drummer, I thought I was awesome. And every single compliment that I got inflated my head bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually it all popped when I failed my first drum audition. Oh, that feels a lot better. Now, the gift that this gave me once I was able to be humbled and put my ego aside is I was actually able to get better at the drums. Thinking that I was really awesome made me not practice because I thought I was already awesome. But if I was a little bit more humble and honest with myself each step of the way, I could have dug into my weaknesses a little bit and not feeling bad about them, but just knowing that they're there so that I can make my weaknesses my strengths. And I think that is what makes a good drummer a great drummer. So the moral of the story, be humble and don't get inflated. To go along with this, my second regret is that I thought I was gifted when it came to drumming. Yes, for some people, drumming can be a little bit easier in the beginning than others, but this does not mean that drumming isn't for everyone. For me in the early stages, drumming did come a little bit more naturally to me, which led me to believe that this whole journey would be easy. So then when things got hard, I didn't work through them and therefore was hitting drumming ruts and certain plateaus in my playing. But if you compare that to drummers who worked really hard in the beginning, even just to get simple beats, down, this teaches them to keep pushing forward through those hard times, which in the long run will allow them to get a lot better. My third mistake is I had no process for practicing. I mostly just played songs that I liked, which was really fun, but didn't help me develop hard skills to actually get better. So what I would do differently is create a plan. One little tip that could be helpful is to create a trigger. A trigger is basically just a reminder for you to practice. So if you put a pair of drumsticks where you would put your keys when you get home from work, this would be a good trigger to remind you to practice. Step number two is to focus. Diligently work on your craft without distractions. When you show up to your kit, know what you're gonna work on and just do it. Step number three is to track your practice and write down what you worked on so that you can reference it in the coming practice sessions and try to improve. And finally, end every practice session with a reward of just having fun. This can be your time to play along to songs and just enjoy the kit, but always start off with your practice first. And what was even worse than not having any process for my practicing is I had no roadmap for where I was going in my drumming overall. I was always working on random beats and fills, hoping that it would help me become better, but they were never leading to any end goal. That's why I created my brand new free course, The Master Drummer Roadmap, that gives you a full roadmap to where you should be going in your drumming, no matter what level you are at. No matter where you're at in your drumming, we will analyze it and help you take those next steps to up-level your playing without the confusion in a very short amount of time. So you can click right up here to get the course totally for free. Trust me, you're gonna love this and this is going to improve your drumming. But now let's get into my fourth regret. Now, even though I spent most of my time playing along to songs, the ironic thing is I didn't even have a good process for learning songs, so I was just playing them incorrectly. Now let's learn from my mistakes and let me teach you my four step process to learning a song effectively. Step number one is you want to map out the full structure. How many measures are in the verse, chorus, etc. In what order is everything coming in? This is also when you're gonna to wanna to know the exact tempo to the song. Step number two is to air drum the parts. Once you have the structure, you wanna put it in your headphones and not be behind the kit and try to get a really good idea of what the drummer in the song is doing. With step number three, you are going to play behind the kit and you are going to loop each section, verse, chorus, bridge, over and over again so that you can troubleshoot each part of the song without getting overwhelmed by the whole thing. Finally, step number four is repetition. I want you to repeat the songs over and over and over again until you're able to play through the whole song with simply a metronome. This is going to be the ultimate test that you are ready 
and prepared to play this song. And when you combine these four steps together, you will ensure that you are playing the song correctly rather than just winging it. The fifth regret I have is being way too down on myself if I had a bad practice session or I couldn't quite get a beat or a fill down in the amount of time that I wanted to do it. I think a lot of this stems from a lack of patience. I always just wanted to sit down and play the beat or fill and if I couldn't play it on my first try, I thought I totally sucked. But if we can acknowledge that there's a time limit to learn a new skill, whether that's five minutes or five hours, I think that will help us give ourselves more grace and know that this stuff just takes time. None of your favorite drummers were able to just sit down and play everything that they can play now. They all had to spend time to learn those new skills. And so that should be encouraging to you to know that all this stuff takes time. And bad practice sessions and frustration are part of it. But as long as you have the patience and grace to keep pushing forward, you're gonna be in great shape. The sixth regret I have is not working on technical things until much later. For example, I totally avoided marching band because I thought it was lame, but really I was just being lame. This would have been an amazing opportunity for me to work on my hands and my rudiments. So don't be like me. Let me show you an amazing rudiment exercise real quick that I call the rudiment ladder. So this is a four measure exercise in which you are going to play four rudiments. The first measure, you are going to be playing the paradiddle on the practice pad played a 16th notes. Second measure, you are going to be playing the six stroke roll played a 16th note triplets. Then the third measure, you are going to be playing a double paradiddle as 16th note triplets. And then finally, the last measure, you are going to be playing a paradiddle diddle as 16th notes. The beautiful thing about this exercise is that once it's over, it sets you up to play the whole thing again, but with your left hand leading. Let me show you what it sounds like. So this exercise will help you with your rudiments and I wish that I would have worked on this when I was younger. And also my technique, it wasn't until I started watching Jojo Mayer's DVD that I even started working on technique. Speaking of Jojo Mayer, I spent way too much time comparing myself to other drummers. Now it is incredible to be inspired by other drummers and to see what type of things they can do behind the kit because that can totally expand your mind. But there is a fine line between being inspired and comparing yourself. Every time I compare myself to other drummers, it just distracts me and discourages me from the things that I actually want to work on and get better at. But if you just stick to your drumming path and don't deviate from it, then you're going to make a lot more progress because if you start branching out in a bunch of different ways, you're not going to be channeling all your energy into one direction and that is where most of the progress is made. I also avoided swing and triplets for way too long. When all you do is listen to Blink-182, you aren't really worried about your swing feel. But when I had to play Superstition by Stevie Wonder for an audition, my world of straight 16th notes came crashing down. And, spoiler alert, I failed the audition. Versatility is very important in a lot of cases. I still think you should pursue the main genre that you're most interested in, but a lot of the times you'll find that there's a lot of fun to be had once you branch out and you can actually incorporate and combine genres together and really develop your own style that way. For example, after I failed that audition, I learned to love triplets and swing feel and it's hugely important in my everyday drumming. Filming yourself can give you a brand new perspective on like what you look like and like what you sound like in your drumming. For example, if I were to do this again, I would have said like a lot less. Plus, I would have moved that phone off the desk because why have that in the shot? And this little weird hair that I have in my forehead. Yeah, I would get that out of the way. Looking a lot better, dude. Thank you. Yeah, I think I would have caught a lot more earlier on in my playing if I was recording and reviewing everything that I was practicing. Sometimes when you are practicing behind the kit, you don't have the best ear for exactly what's going on. But the recording never lies, and this can help point out some glaring mistakes that you might not have noticed before. Thank you again for the help. You're welcome. <laughs> The 10th thing I regret is having a bad attitude when someone in my band suggested that I try a different beat or fill. Growing up, I played in a lot of bands where I wanted to play whatever the heck I wanted and that normally involved 
a lot of notes. Now in certain band settings, they wanted more of a pocket and a groove, and this would make me mad. It would make me feel like what I was doing wasn't good enough. But really, you have to be a team player. If someone suggests you try something new, this is a new opportunity for you to be creative and play something that makes the entire band sound better. So really, it's an opportunity for growth, and you should always try to welcome that be humble about it, and have some ideas in your back pocket to try out and see what works. So do you have any regrets in your drumming journey so far? If so, let me know in the comment section below as a declaration to saying, hey, I'm gonna learn from these and that's okay. And if you are looking for a complete roadmap to up-level your drumming, I would highly recommend checking out my free course, The Master Drummer Roadmap, right up here. You're gonna love it. But thank you so much for watching this video. Stay true, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.